don't scratch it in public. <laughs> it does. I think, yeah. So, what, um, again, we're going kind of loosey goosey today. It's informal. Let's try to hear some comments because you guys have come a long way. We're the people's house. Typically, in a subcommittee, we don't even take public testimony. Um, but um, I'm going to defer this time to Representative because he's another rep in the room, and then we'll continue around with uh, Ian's row. Uh, you, you, you touched on a couple of issues I haven't heard discussed yet. Um, one is the question of who's a public official. Uh -huh. um, we had uh, an incident happen, um, as you're aware, in court on Monday where uh, a high school principal was on the stand and basically said, no, I'm not a public official, and yet um, if she's not, then who else is it? And I think that the clarifying that definition, whether it's coming up with a standard definition that we use everywhere or specifically in this case, needs to be crystal clear. We need to be able to say who is considered to be a public official in the line of duty because at that point there's now an exception. that We, we now know that public officials essentially by taking that position waive their right to privacy at their job. If you go work at a supermarket, no, just because you're there doesn't mean you can be recorded, but when you take a public position, you, you essentially accept as part of that responsibility the public part of that. Well, That's let me like, ask you, if you're a rep and you're at the grocery store, are you still a public official, or only when you're in the state house, or well? But or that's a perfect bags? example. If I'm walking around and I'm shopping in the grocery store, no. But if I run into a constituent and um, they happen to be uh, having a phone and they say, you know, I've got a question for you and I'm going to put it on my blog, I think they have the right to go ahead and record, even if I say, yeah, I really don't want to talk about that right now, because that is a public response. Mm -hmm. um, we're entering into an age of technology, and this is part two of what I was going to say, where Google is coming out with these things called Google Glasses. I mean, the cameras have gotten so small, and the technology has gotten so good that essentially you can live stream to the internet so other people can be seeing exactly what's going on in your day. And if essentially with the, with the two-party system we have, anybody who puts on one of those pair of glasses potentially can be charged with a felony almost immediately. That, to me, says we have a problem. So <coughs> solution one would be to go to a one-party cons uh, consent. So at that point, it's no longer an issue. <laughs> if, if, and I'm not sure what the advantage would be to leaving us as a two-party state. Uh, and I'm curious, I'm curious to ask the, the sponsor why his bill didn't just seek to go to a one-party state. I was thinking, of, uh, if I might answer, Chairman. Please, yeah. Um, I'm thinking of one individual.